Okay, uh, this is a CNCFCI working group on Tuesday, April 10th. I've shared my screen and also shared the links to today's CI working group um, meeting agenda notes and the slides that we're using today. Feel free to add your name and email address, contact information to the notes and agenda. Also, if you have any updates that you would like to add to the slides, feel free to do so. And Taylor, if you're available, I see you're muted. You can go on through the first slide. Second slide has the wow. dial in details. Can y'all hear me? I was trying to dial in yeah. to switch my audio. Okay, we'll go ahead. So we, um, <clears throat> we've had a few releases in March uh, covering uh, quite a few items, including adding some cl uh, new clouds as well as projects and attended ONS. Um, cloud provider wise, we OpenStack is now uh, production on CNCFCI. And we have uh, FluentD as well. And we attended ONS and there was a face-to-face -face CICD workshop during that time. Go on to the slide five, I guess, and we can hop into those releases. So one of the big items that happened during March was adding a, a non-CNCF project, the Linux Foundation Project ONAP, um, and specifically their service orchestrator. And that added a external integration to the ONAP CI system they run their own uh, Jenkins um, tied in for the CI. They build their own containers and they publish those in a registry that Linux Foundation provides. And we did the integration with that where we pull in those artifacts, validate that they work, and then use them during the app deployment phase. We also use their integration test and run those um, at the end to validate the service orchestrator and all the pieces that were running at that time. So that was pretty great <clears throat> achievement. We've also been working with them as they're getting ready for a release, um, a new release on the ONAP side, be Beijing, and they've had a, a few items that are changing and we've done some pull requests or uh, open tickets and help them with those. We are fixing some updates on head and we'll be doing some pull requests for the Helm charts um, to work with them, which um, they're working on right now for quite a few components. So OpenStack, as I had mentioned, was another big one. Uh, Chris Hodge did uh, the large um, majority of the work and then Melvin also helped um, on the second, we kind of had a second revision of the OpenStack side as we moved it through um, af after it was ready for us and we we're trying to integrate and do some testing. It went back and we um, worked with them to make some updates and Melvin was a big help on that side as well. And so that was a contributed uh, cloud provider, which was really awesome, um, great coverage, and it's um, been really uh, good to have their feedback on that process. I think we'll be using that as we're working with some other folks um, in the future. And then we were at ONS, as I said, um, ONAP and, and OpenSec were both shown there, and we had a lot of feedback from both uh, cloud provider folks, uh, the Alibaba, People came over and had a lot of conversations um, about their stuff. Um, the Huawei folks had a lot of good talk and feedback on things and then dug into the ONAP side and integrations with external CI systems and how the information can be passed back and forth. So that feedback we're going to be 
going forward with. So that was exciting. And that face-to-face -face CI workshop uh, before the weekend was a lot of communities and that was really great feedback uh, for the open CI. So that was good. Some of those folks will be at uh, KubeCon, so we'll be following up with them as we go forward. Okay, let's go on to slide eight. And then on the cross-cloud CI project, as far as the development goes right now, Kubernetes uh, 110 support, <clears throat> we're updating the cross-cloud provisioning side. There are some um, deprecated items that we've uh, now covered and we're going through and updating a few things for the end-to-end -end test and some other items and provisioning. And then that'll be ready to go um, as far as the Terraform code. And then we're good to go and 110 will be up on the dashboard. And as I mentioned before, the ONAP on the <clears throat> head release, they, they made a change upstream, <clears throat> things were breaking. They fixed their build now and we're going to be updating our integration code to work with those changes. Packet was having some resource issues, this is kind of just side item, but Packet was has, having some resource issues in one of the regions, so we've migrated to a different region at their request. And that seems to have resolved those issues. So what's next? Um, we'll be, we're working on adding Oracle support um, in that process. And then we'll be looking at Huawei and Alibaba as far as clouds and ARM support is still in the, in the queue at some point in the future after these clouds. We're also looking at Envoy and Jaeger and a few of the other projects as far as the next. Envoy is gonna be added um, as the next project though. On the cross-cloud CI project itself, this internal software, we are in progress on automating the project release updates. So as a version changes upstream, we'll be making the change and pulling it in to cross-cloud. Um, some of the projects, the way that they publish or show those versions can be a little bit different. So we'll tracking those and um, going through and we'll provide any feedback upstream and otherwise I uh, hope to have this on soon and then the dashboard and the builds and everything else will be running based on new releases similar to how we pull master and the head commits this will allow us to be tying in with history and the api itself and that's going to allow us to do a lot of other things in, in the API server for the status repository, including new screens, uh, being able to roll back to previous release, tool tips and other items in the dashboard for different versions and what worked and what didn't work. And then providing direct access to the API for folks to query and look at stuff like Prometheus 196 with a specific version of, um, of Kubernetes and other items like that. So what's, where are we doing as far as community goes? The OpenCI, which I mentioned, that came out of that face-to-face -face before ONS. There's a white, a white paper that's being collaboratively built. Um, and HH, Rowan, Rowan are also contributing to that. Hey, guys. And some other, quite a few other folks. So that was really cool. Um, we are actually working on RFC for a pipeline messaging protocol. And we've provided a link there if you want to check that out. We were working on that the last um, couple of months. So there you go. And we'll be talking with the VMware folks um, about the cloud. Spinnaker is coming up, looking at that as a option and alternative for GitLab. And then Prometheus and Core DNS, we're trying to work with them on their end-to-end -end tests. So that's continue that collaboration. 
so that they can start maintaining those and helping both within their project and cross cloud CI. And that's about it for us. Uh, upcoming events, more the C next CI working group, April 24th, we'll be at KubeCon, Copenhagen, May 2nd to 4th, providing an intro and deep dive on the cross cloud CI. Be talking more about how to add cloud providers and how to add new projects. Hopefully <clears throat> get the community building those out and helping to provide those sort of things. Any questions? Okay, awesome. Next on the agenda. Go ahead and stop my screen share. Rowan or um, Chris, if you'd like to start your screen share, you're welcome to. I'm starting that now. I think I've, I've shared my screen, but I don't know that I'm seeing anything. Can you see anything? It looks good. Yeah, it looks good. All right. Um, I can't see the slides myself. <laughs> Disappeared. Oh, did it? Uh, yeah. Let me unshare. Do you want me to share instead and then you can talk through them? Yeah, that's fine. Why don't you, why don't you share okay. if it works for you? One second. I dropped a link in the channel. This is um, Hippie Hacker from II Co-op, and we're starting a project called API Snoop. Um, I dropped the, the repo that's at the CNCF right now uh, for the README um, with the proposal and a link to where we have a proof of concept that we'll be working on. So one thing we were wanting to there's a list of things we're wanting to solve. One is um, that Kubernetes test coverage um, is currently calculated using our, um, the end-to-end -end logs. Um, so we have to run the EDE test and then look at the output in order to calculate what's there that only works for the uh, EDE test and doesn't use other applications. It doesn't allow us to use for other applications. The, um, we'd like to figure out a way to cover uh, API for not just the end-to-end -end test, but any application using the Kubernetes API. Um, and in addition to that, uh, conformance group, they're wanting to get their EDE test percentage raised. Um, I think it's sitting at 11% right now. Um, they need to be able to prioritize um, which test they're going to write next. Um, in addition, there's uh, add-ons for add-on conformance. Um, we don't know which particular APIs they're using, and um, if, if add-ons are written in a different language that they're not using the Go um, client library, are they actually conforming to our, our spec? Um, these are the things we'd like to take a look at. Um, so we'd like to make it reusable um, for other projects as well. Um, so on our next slide. Um, we'd like to do something a little generic with uh, we have an open API spec, uh, Swagger JSON. It's actually available at the 
endpoint for any Kubernetes um, uh, URL. <clears throat> um, we'd like to make that available, not just to Kubernetes and then test, but any other application. Um, we're going to look at the inspect the actual calls on the wire uh, rather than looking at the logs. And this will allow us to do it from any add-on um, or the end-to-end -end test, inspecting each of those HTTP requests against the uh, open API spec and tracking our usage um, by a pod, by source IP, by um, anything that we can sort by and keep track of. So the last thing is a, a high level of a API snoop. Um, and the implementation needs to be able to, you know, we wanted the implementation to use outside of Kubernetes. Um, so a couple of steps for that is redirecting the API request to a proxy. So we're going to do that by watching for pods coming up with annotations and then redirecting to the proxy using IP tables. Rather than starting from scratch, we're going to use the existing MITM proxy project. Um, and the end result there is just going to be a module that runs inside uh, as a lot as a plugin to do our open API inspection um, and aggregation. That's the high level. Um, we also have a demo. Does anybody have any questions before we proceed to the demo? All right, Rowan. Great. You've got the screen. Thank you, Chris. Uh, just give me a second. I'm just going to uh, switch things over. Okay, I'm just going to start this thing up again. Make sure it's going to be. Okay, so um, hi, my name is Rowan. Um, I'm just going to walk you through a brief demo of our proof of concept. Um, so I guess the first thing is that uh, we've just got a Kubernetes cluster which is running on uh, GKE. Um, a couple of notes about it is that um, at the moment it requires the alpha features enabled um, and also it requires legacy authorization enabled which basically disables RBAC. Um, the reason we need uh, the Kubernetes alpha features enabled is because we use initializers which is an alpha feature. Um, so yeah, all right, well I'm going to walk you through this quick demo. So the first thing we need is just that could probably working, which is what this will do. Okay, so at the moment, as Chris said, um, so we've got, this is where our, our sort of our code is currently um, sitting on this repo here, the, the proof of concept, but in future we'll be sitting under CNCF slash API snip. Um, and right, so what, we, the first thing we'll do is just clone this code. Um, so, okay, and then zoom into it. Um, okay, I'm just gonna sort of walk through the steps before I actually do them. Um, so, um, it's pretty simple in terms of setting things up. First of all, we just have to set up a Helm because we use Helm charts to deploy things. Um, the second thing we do is that we uh, we create a kube API cert using the Kubernetes API. So what we do is we send it as a certificate signing request saying, hey, can you please sign a certificate 
for Kubernetes and the Kubernetes API um, IP address to Kubernetes and Kubernetes is like, hey, you're right. Um, we'll give you a, a cert signed by our CA for our API server. Um, and then we use that um, certificate to basically any traffic that's intercepted by MIT and proxy, we can pretend to be the API server with the correct, um, like with certs which are signed by the CA. So Kubectl doesn't care, other things won't care as well. There's no difference. Um, and so what we'll do and set up MIT and proxy is we'll um, uh, just do a Helm install um, with a, in, enabling initializers. Uh, then we're going to deploy like a example app, which is basically just like um, a pod which has kubectl that makes calls to kubectl get pods every five seconds. Um, at the moment, we have a little bit of magic that we're sort of using to determine which um, which uh, T proxy uh, is on the same node as the um, as the example app because we're just doing like a port through through instead of having like a, a service that will change later. Um, and then we just, once we've port forwarded, we can open up a browser uh, to that port and we can get the MITM web interface, which is part of the MITM proxy. Um, we won't see any, uh, any sort of traffic. Uh, and the reason is, is because you only see traffic for pods that you annotate with a certain annotation, um, which is here. And yeah, okay, well, I'm gonna just show you step by step now. So quick for that. Okay, so the first thing is, um, I'm just gonna clone our repo. Oh wait, no, I've already done that. So um, create Kube API cert. So yeah, um, as I was saying, it creates a CSR request using the endpoints, um, internal and external. Um, I'm just basically uh, templating, I uh, templated out the CSR settings and you can just overwrite these in. And then here's our CSR request that gets sent to Kubernetes. Uh, then we approve it and then get the CSR, like the certificates out, combine them and make them ready for MITM. Um, okay, so I'll just do that now. Oh, wait, sorry, first thing we need to do is Helm and it. Okay, and now we can go and run this, create the Kube, Kube API cert. So it's generating the CSR request now. Moving it to Kubernetes, approving it, getting the result in cert. Here we go, we can see that this has been signed by the CA. These are the endpoint addresses for Kubernetes. So now that we've got that, we're all ready to go. Second thing is, um, I'll just show you to set up in my team proxy. So currently, um, it requires sites to be built for my team proxy as if it's going to run its own CA. And that's just, I think, a dependency of the way that things were done before. Um, but the main command is here, uh, which is basically just installing, setting a value um, to use the initializer. Um, so we can do that now. It's just creating the certs in Docker. Okay, so now that's been deployed. We can do a kubectl get pods. We can see that here are our T proxies running. Um, there's one T proxy running per node. I can go kubectl get nodes, this is a free node cluster. Um, free site. Um, so one, two proxy for each node. Um, and I'm just gonna go back to here because I've got, oh yeah, that's right. So kubectl, so the next step is basically to deploy our example app. Uh, which is, and if you go to kubectl, get pods, we can see that our, our example is now running. Now this is the um, 
little bit of funky logic around um, finding out which node um, each pod is running on. So um, here we can see it's running on the same node as this uh, tproxy here. And there's just a um, same one as this one, which is through here. So there's just some stuff that basically sets some sets the T proxy pod. And there it is there. Now we're just gonna do we're gonna do a port forward. Um, and then that is now forwarding to 49,000 on localhost to 8081 on that cluster, which is the MIT and web interface. And now I can open up that page in my browser. And here we go. Here's the MIT and web interface, which is on that particular pod on the cluster. Notice there's no traffic, um, but if I go to um, kubectl get, oh, kubectl logs, kubectl. I don't have um, dash, I don't have what I can put here. Dash F. So here you can see that it's making these requests. This is the output from the kubectl command on that on that example pod, um, but the requests aren't coming through. So now finally, what we need to do is just um, oops, I need that still there. we just need to annotate that pod, and then we'll start seeing some logs on the web interface. Been annotated. We go back to our web interface, and here we can see the traffic being intercepted um, with authorizations and stuff. At the moment, we're not uh, recording the request and response, but the the um, we can see the headers. So this shows that we're able to intercept the HTTPS traffic. Um, any questions? Okay. Um, all right, Chris, do you want to? Looks great. Thanks, Ron. Uh, just gonna go with here. There's only one more slide for us. I think it's the. Um, yeah. What's next? Thanks for pulling it up, Ron. Yep. No trouble. So this um, POC just demonstrates this, the ability to intercept the traffic um, once we annotate a pod. Um, but there's some unnecessary complexity that was uh, um, inside this, this implementation that we need to refactor. Um, once we get that up, we're going to get a reliable Helm chart for deploying the proxy certs and, and redirection um, that refactored uh, approach. Um, then the next step is going to be, instead of bringing up the MITM web proxy for inspection, we're going to write the main logic as an MITM module. Nice. This week, uh, over the next week or two, we're going to start uh, collaborating with the test infra in order to understand how we need to integrate with their CI integration. Uh, particularly the retrieval of output and, and uh, what that format needs to look like. That will probably be the next two, two to four weeks um, in this section. That's the update from the API Snoop team. I'll hand it back over to CrossCloud. Thanks, Shell. That was awesome. Folks, this is um, Dan Kahn. I, I just have a closing question from the group, um, but we could solve it by email, which is just that this remains a really small working group. There's 12 folks here, and obviously many of us talk offline. I just wonder whether it might be more productive if we move from um, every other week meetings to once a month meetings. But there's 
there's no pressure on it. If, if you guys feel like this is useful to get together and, and share, we can continue to do it. It seems like different folks will show up on the different weeks and I don't know if that's just their availability or not. I think we could have once a month if we had a day that works for folks. Um, I'm also willing to just be here for the conversation. Seems like we get good feedback and seeing the API snoop, maybe if we get more and other folks involved, we'd have uh, more people on the call as well. Yeah, I'm, my only slight hesitancy, I mean, I, I, obviously I'm a big fan of the API stream stuff. I'm not quite sure it actually fits in this working group. Um, but I, I don't mean it in a negative way. I mean, it's just, it, it's, um, it, it, it can certainly live here until we find a better home for it. Sure. Uh, it might be hopping around between the groups. <laughs> <laughs> I, I don't want, yeah, Chris to feel unwelcome. Um, okay, let, let's just leave it as an open question for another for the next few meetings. But okay. um, it, it, it's just there's no it doesn't have to be every other week is my it's, I guess my point. Okay, sounds good. I think the okay. next one might be is it before KubeCon or during KubeCon? I'm trying to look. Before. It's before. Okay, thanks, Lucina. Okay, maybe we can put a post to the list, Dan, <clears throat> see what folks think. This is Chris. I had another thought. Um, am I muted? No. Um, when I first voted for this time of day, it was during the New Zealand summer. And as we're hemisphere opposites, when we shift and everybody with the time zone, it actually brings us from 5 a.m. to 3 a.m. in the morning for the start of the call. So as we evaluate possibly shifting the number of a current, I'd also like to look at possibly shifting the time, um, um, depending on everybody else's thoughts. I'm not trying to push New Zealand, but I am mm -hmm. definitely trying to see if the time could fit a little better. You know, one thing I was thinking, um, Chris, was some folks may prefer afternoons as far as Northern Hemisphere. So maybe mm -hmm. we could do one week in the morning and one week in the afternoon. And that might give more opportunity for folks. Anyways, we can follow up with both of those offline, either in the Slack CI uh, Working Group channel or on the mailing list. Cool. Um, well, thanks everyone for joining. Thanks for that demo. That was pretty awesome. Excited to see <laughs> where that goes. Thank you. It looks like it'll be useful <clears throat> in general for other projects that need to do API coverage. Have a good one, y'all.